Welcome to Impressions Magazine's Ask the Experts podcast and video series, where we talk to veteran professionals from across the decorated apparel industry about the technologies and techniques they've used to help make their own businesses a success. In this episode, we'll be talking some more with professional embroiderer and embroidery business coach Alexis Galloway, founder of So Sweet Academy, about the ins and outs of making the switch from hobbyist to business professional, lead generation, and taking full advantage of the holiday market. Note, this is the second of two video interviews we're doing with Ms. Galloway on these topics. Once again, a former physical therapist assistant in 2019, Alexis launched So Sweet Academy, a machine embroidery membership community offering a range of online courses for embroiderers of all skill levels looking to up their game in terms of everything from basic embroidery skills to marketing and best practices. Alexis is also the creator of My Pretty Perfect Embroidery Planner to help embroiderers organize the many projects they're involved in. And she's also a past presenter as part of the Impressions Expo conference series. And with that, let's go ahead and check in again with Ms. Galloway. All right, Alexis. Well, well, here we are again. Good to talk to you some more. Um, and 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 we're just going to pick right up where we, we left off with with the, the the other video we were doing or the other interview we were doing. And and uh, when we were talking, we were talking about you know two types of tests: uh, set it and forget it, and ongoing. And and uh, again, a lot of this is drawing from your your presentations that that you make at uh, um, Impressions Expo. But kind of building from that, you also talked about the importance of setting up a promotional calendar and uh, and then and then uh, setting up what you call choosing your customer acquiring activity and then going all in on it. And I was wondering if you could maybe uh, talk a little bit about that, what that what that means uh, and, and and how it's done in practice. So the customer acquiring activity that I spoke of is more like lead generation, if, if a lot of viewers have heard of that. So basically, how are you going to get people to notice you? How are you going to get people to come in and say, hey, I like that person, I like that business, or I like what they're doing? Um, that's going to go back from those posts. So you have to show people what you're doing. You have to put things out there, whether it's something in your local area, you know, people are still putting business cards, you're still doing flyers, you're still doing um, different kinds of ads somewhere. So those are going to be the things that you're going to use to bring people into your business, get them to shop with you, get them to become loyal customers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and basically, when you talk about going all in, that's just making that a part of your your work day. I mean, that's part of your job too. That's part of being an embroiderer. It's not just working the machine. Um, it's not just digitizing. If you do your own digitizing, part of the job of and, and getting all the way back to part one, getting out of the hobbyist mindset, I suppose, is recognizing that you're not just waiting for orders to come to you. You're going out and finding them. Is that right? Yeah. Getting out of your own way, just getting that fearless motivation and that drive to say, hey, hey, look at me, you know, mm -hmm. and not worrying about what people are going to think about it. Because the one thing I tell my students all the time, there's enough out here for all of us. I don't care if we all do the same thing in the same area. There's something that you're going to do that's going to resonate with a customer more mm -hmm. than something that I do. So just getting out there, going full speed ahead, telling people, mm -hmm. hey, okay. shop with me. Okay. And, I, and you, I think you touched on this a little bit already. You talk about, you know, things like organic promotion or paid sales, vendor events. I, and I think actually, if I remember correctly, during your conference session, again, you talked a lot about going to uh, kind of like community fairs or markets or flea markets and things like that. I want to maybe, maybe give some ideas of some of the, 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 the specific avenues, uh, both paid and unpaid, that, that uh, you know, hobbyists making the transition can, can use to take their business to the next level, develop a customer base? Yeah, so my favorite is going to be like local vendor events. Um, I I have a couple of them here locally. They'll do, what is the name of it? I don't, well, okay, the name has escaped me, but different holiday. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're getting the wrong camera. <laughs> <laughs> holiday events, though. Anything around a holiday. So if someone has a local expo or... Mm -hmm or any of your local churches or schools or anything that offers a space. So that's basically like getting a booth at an okay. event, whether it be indoor, outdoor, wherever you wanna start, and then just setting up shop. And that would be ways to, to get yourself out there in the community. Sometimes you have to pay a booth fee, sometimes it's free. The best thing to do while you're there though is to um, network with the other vendors and also with whoever's throwing the event. I can remember my first event that I went to, I was so shocked because one of a, 
one of the ladies from another event came around and got our contact information and wanted us to then participate in her next upcoming event. So from that first one, after that, I really didn't have to look for anything. It became a snowball effect. Um, so even in our these events want people like embroiderers out there. Yes. I mean, it's it's not like you're trying to you know force your way in. They they want to build traffic and, and energy as well. Is that right? So it's it's right. they're looking for you too. They want it's a it's a matter of making the connection. Right. And then if you choose to stitch on site. So that's where I got a lot of my success from. I was bold enough or maybe crazy enough, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> to load up my six needle machine, take it with me and stitch right there on site. And then that's going to bring more traffic to the event because the person that's um that's that's putting on the event, they can market it and say we have someone on site to personalize the items that you purchase and then also some of the other vendors that are in the in the event with you, they're going to be able to sell their items faster because they can say, "Hey, purchase this from me. My friend down the down the pathway right here, she mm -hmm. or he can can personalize this for you right here on the spot. Mm, fantastic. Oh, so so for instance, you'd have, I don't know, maybe someone's doing a, 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 a tie dye t-shirt or something mm -hmm. like that. And then they could bring it to you and you could put their name on it or something yeah. like that. Or a cap okay. or, you know, a backpack. Those were my, my most famous, huh. most popular ones. Backpacks, boots, uh, anything that could just easily slide on my machine and slide off. I had probably about a 20 minute rule. If I couldn't get it stitched in 20 minutes, then I would take it home and and okay. still contact them later or ship it. And this is an example, you know, there, there are a lot of business terms out there that that, that are kind of abstract and, and, and people may be wondering, what does that mean exactly? This is networking. This is getting out there and talking to other vendors who aren't necessarily, they're not embroiderers at all. I can see where you're the only embroiderer at these events, but you're talking to people who are making backpacks, for example, and just getting out there, meeting people and then opportunities then that you might not have known existed kind of become apparent, right? Right. Absolutely. Networking is a beautiful thing. I mean, you get to meet people that you did not know you needed in your business. Interesting. Interesting. And I would imagine there are probably people who represent organizations who are this. Someone's, I don't know, 4-H or again, like church groups or, or sporting yeah. organizations or clubs or family reunions. And they say, oh, wait a second, there's this embroiderer over there and, isn't, and, and it doesn't cost as much as they might think. Right. Um, and, and when you go there, would you wear, uh, I mean, did you have, would you wear your own product, I suppose? Uh, and oh, would yes. you have business cards? And so you don't just come with a machine, you come prepared to, to, to give people the, the means by which they can follow up with you. Is that right? Yeah. So branding and marketing material is going to be very important. You know, when we're out representing ourselves, we now have to do what we're encouraging the others that we stitch for. Like when we're putting a logo on them, we're telling them, you want to wear your logo. We want to do the exact same thing. We're in a new age now to where business cards are not as needed because we have QR scanner codes. So think about things like that. Get you a banner, put your QR scanner code because some of your customers that are walking by, they may not want to engage in a conversation or you may be engaged with another customer and you can't really speak to them the way you need to. But if they scan that QR code, they can keep going, look at what they need, follow you or, you know, however they need to stay in contact with you. And that just gives you another touch point of how you can reach more hmm. people. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And, and in terms of finding these events, are they hard? Are, are they hard to find? I mean, if I, I'm not aware of something like that happening in the town where I live in right now. Actually, that's not true. I can think of two different farmers markets, which are, which mm -hmm. are happening right now within a quarter mile of where I'm sitting. Um, it, it is one of those things where once you start looking, there's this whole kind of world of, of festivals and markets out there that, 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 are, that are opportunities for someone who are looking to break into the business. Absolutely. I mean, it just depends. Everything that you can think of under the sun is going to need some type of merch to go with it. I ran across somebody that was with a dog show. So what are they going to want? They're going to want um, personalized dog tags. You know, give me. We any... know they're a bit crazy, right? We've seen the movies, <laughs> yeah. of the, right? We've seen the videos. <laughs> give me any random topic and I can tell you something that they would want personalized for their industry. And that's where you're really going to shine, because if it's something very small and specific that you won't find in a in a general store or something, then that's where you step in and say, hey, I can make this personal for you. It's not right. just a name that I can't find on a keychain anymore, I can specifically make this to, to the industry that you're in. And everybody almost these days are looking for something right. to be able to, to plug you into. 
Right. And is this, and, and circling back a little bit, I know we were talking, maybe we were talking before we were, we were recording about not just taking work as it comes in, but kind of finding your niche, finding a specialty or a market. Is, 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 is that something that will also come out of this activities? Like, for instance, the backpacks you were talking about. One, one moment you've got someone just coming down the aisle from a, a flea market, and the next thing you know, you're suddenly becoming a backpack specialist. Is that, is that also what can, you can get from this kind of, uh, this kind of networking? Yeah, for sure. And even if, even if nobody is asking you to be at their event, if you find that someone is asking you for this a lot, you can put on your own event. You can be a one person show and eventually grow out to now you are the vendor event that mm -hmm. is being put on. So you're having different specialists come in. So it's mm -hmm. not just a, you have to go out and look for it. I've seen people even in my neighborhood one day, it made me laugh. I turned into my neighborhood and someone set up shop in their driveway. And that was their little drive-by flea market thing. So oh, really? you put your garage door up if you have the space. I have, I'm in right, Georgia, so right. we have a lot of space, but. <laughs> now I tell you what, I'm going to go dark on us here for a second. I'm sure you've had instances where you've gone to maybe an event and it didn't go well, or you you feel like you're calling and you can't find anything. I, I mean, and, and I, we in, in, when we talked earlier, the, the, our, our, our earlier conversation, we talked about don't feel alone, right? I mean, I mean, do you find that some of your customers are so sweet Academy members that say, oh my God, this last week, I just couldn't seem to get any traction. I couldn't seem to move forward. What would you say to those people? Is it, again, you're not alone. That's part of business, right? But don't give up. Yeah, so don't give up. That's the obvious answer. But maybe that just wasn't your event. Maybe that just wasn't wasn't your thing. And I'll tell people oh, that just wasn't your person. It's not your customer. And don't judge your whole business career off of one failed event. I can think of one in particular. I did not. It was one of my first ones ever. I did not research the area. I did not research the type of event or the person putting on the event. And it wound up being a church, event, which was a very needed event. But it was a church event that typically did a lot of free things for the community. So me coming and setting up shop and having premium prices didn't go over well. Mm -hmm. And I could have let that discourage me. I could have just, you know, run into a shell and never come back out. But I, I let that be a stepping stone to say, OK, what kind of event this is, know what questions to ask in advance and then bring the things that the people at that event will want. Right. I mean, it's so cliche, but you learn from that mistake. Right. And, oh, yeah. uh, and I suppose you know it, it, a lot of it, a lot of embroiders are are, are making the transition. They're crafters, right? They, and and if you think about it, I, I would imagine um, you you make a lot of mistakes actually in the embroider itself, whether it's the design or this and that. And it's going to be you're going to make mistakes in business too, right? And 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 now that you're taking it to a business, that's a whole it's a whole new type of failure you're going to start making. But that's just part of making the dream happen. I would imagine. Does that does that sound about right or? Yes, because a lot of times when you go from crafter, hobbyist, business owner, whatever it is, a lot of us don't have the business background. I came from a healthcare background. And when I first started, I did not know anything about business licensing, taxes, getting just tax ID, any of that kind of stuff. And you just really have to learn as you go. That's probably the best way to do it because give try giving me all the information I need to survive in one sitting and I guarantee you I will not memorize any of it but if you give it to me bit by bit whereas right. it makes sense as I build on it right. that's typically how we learn and how we thrive right right okay cool um I'll tell you what once again I I, I noticed that I, I, we're already kind of plowing through our time we want to keep these short but I, I know um a, a big part of what you talked about and and, and talk about is planning ahead staying ahead of the game. And you especially talk about the holiday market and planning ahead for that. Um, can you maybe give us a quick overview of what that means planning ahead, how you go about planning ahead to, I think you talked about like Christmas being the Super Bowl for decorators, or, or, you know. So so what does that mean? And, and again, this, I think circling back, this is all about getting beyond just being a hobbyist and thinking like a business person in terms of maximizing sales and revenue for holiday. So how do you, how do, you do that? What does that mean? So planning ahead is, is definitely exactly what it sounds like. You decide when, when you need this deadline met by and then reverse engineer. So if that means for a holiday, for Christmas example, that's a great example. So you want to start probably three months in advance deciding 
what am I going to put out? You know, you can okay. look at places like like Pinterest. You know, I I like to think I'm researching on Pinterest, but to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I'm scrolling. <laughs> and um, but you know, you can get ideas from there and just see what the market is doing, see what colors and what designs and just what items are going to be popular. And then see how you can put your own spin on it. A lot of people, they get worried that, oh, somebody else is doing this and that's okay. You can, you can put your own spin on things. So once you decide what you're going to make, now you decide how many will I need? You know, am I going to do those events? Am I going to sell locally? Am I going to sell online? And that way you're not, you're not coming up with mountains and mountains of blanks that you don't actually need. Right. And then from there, you're planning out your day. And if I remember, okay, you have spreadsheets or, or or kind of forms that you use to, like you said, you know, schedule backwards. Let's we'll, we'll say Christmas or, or Halloween or Thanksgiving. You know, we start October thirty first, and you've actually you kind of schedule in reverse schedule, I suppose, um, figuring out. All right, well, if I'm going to do this, I need to start researching by. Well, I mean, for October, late October, by midsummer, you're already thinking Halloween, right? Yeah. Um, and you're already researching different ideas. Um, and then you figure, well, if I'm going to do that, I need to start ordering blanks at this date, right? And and you want to, and you do even figure, well, I'd like to be in production by this date. Say, I don't know, what would that, what would that be? Or mid September, late September, you want to be in full production by then, or is that already too late? For for which holiday were you? For, for say Halloween. For Halloween, oh, you know, I kind of go with the store when the when Walmart or any of the malls or anything they start to put out their items. That's my thought to say, oh, I need to start looking at this, especially if you're not ordering in bulk from like overseas somewhere and you're just kind of getting your blanks from some of the local stores that have okay. decent okay. price things. But for for a Halloween example, yeah, I would say probably August, you know, end of July, start thinking about it, August, anytime the, the fall hits. I right. want to start with that Halloween type stuff because think about it. Halloween isn't just the 31st. It's the whole month of October. And right. then you can kind of roll in all the fall stuff with it. So right. those colors are going to be important to have um, those types of blanks. And then always remember, sometimes you can repurpose different holiday blanks for another holiday that coincides with the color. So I remember, yeah, for instance, you said red is a good red is a good uh, Christmas color, and it's also a good Valentine's, Valentine's color. Valentine's. And I would imagine yeah. like orange is a good Halloween color, but that also works for your Thanksgiving stuff, right? Yes, and so. then don't forget the the Easter baskets. I've even used some of the Easter baskets as Halloween baskets. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little Not weird, color but, wise, <laughs> but if you have just a neutral color. You right. can put whatever on it. So think about more of the the blank rather than the design, because we we do the design. But just think about the the generalized item and how can you repurpose sure. okay. that? Okay, okay. And I get I, and this is one of those things I would imagine planning ahead gives you. You're not just running to stand. You're not running to stand still. I suppose planning ahead, thinking ahead, you can actually say, oh, all right, why don't I order blanks that I can use down the road as well, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So you're doing, you're again, I guess this is, again, getting right back to your breaking out of the hobbyist mindset, the business mindset, what makes sense, not just for the order that I've got to fill right now, but the order of two months from now and even half a year from now, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. Outstanding. Well, I'll tell you what, Alexis, I, we, we've covered some more great stuff here. I, I, I and, and again, I suspect we're going to be talking again soon. So again, thanks a lot for all this great insight. It's been really fun. And we will talk to you later. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. All right, well, that wraps up part two of our conversation with professional embroiderer and embroidery business coach, Alexis Galloway, founder of So Sweet Academy. To catch the first part of our conversation, click on the link in the show notes below. And for those of you interested in learning more about Alexis and So Sweet, go to sosweetacademy.com. That's sosweetacademy.com, S-E-W-S-W-E-E-T-A-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com. Or again, click on the show notes below. For those interested in learning more about Impressions Magazine and the thrice annual Impressions Expo trade shows held in Fort Worth, Texas, Long Beach, California, and Atlantic City, New Jersey, go to impressionsmagazine.com. For now, though, thanks again for joining us and keep on decorating.